Okay guys, what you see here in the center is my 500 millimeter f8 reflex Nikkor lens. It's a mirror lens combination and it's very compact as you can see for 500 millimeters and I bought it specifically uh, in 1990 to take with me to the July 11th 1991 total solar eclipse in La Paz Baja California I wanted something to take on the plane that everything would fit in a camera bag it'd be small compact and uh, that fit the bill and what you see here is the uh, excellent Nikon teleconverter the TC 14 B 1.4 times so that combination with this lens and that teleconverter would give me 700 millimeters at f11 f11 is perfect for shooting um, totality and uh, I, at that time it was film and I was using 100 uh, Fuji Riala I was going through my lenses uh, the other week and uh, when I looked at this 500 millimeter I noticed that it had a little little spot of lens fungus now this lens is rarely used because again I bought it for that specific purpose of eclipses the uh, other times that I used it other than 1991 would have been 1998 in Aruba for the total solar 1999 in August for Bucharest Romania the total solar and uh, the last time I used this lens for a total solar was in 2001 in Lusaka Zambia Africa subsequent eclipses I just uh, looked visually because I had plenty of pictures and I wanted to do just visual with a small 60 millimeter teleview refractor but now I'm wondering now how did this lens get that fungus on it because obviously fungus comes from moisture that got in there it was trapped inside and uh, with mo uh, with the heat then you can grow some moisture so uh, but I needed a way to stop it okay because it's inside the lens it's inside the lens if you look right there at the bottom see that dot at the very bottom you'll see that that's what I'm talking about a little dot right there so I had to go about finding a way to stop the fungus I wasn't going to have the lens taken apart and cleaned so there you see that dot I've taken the uh, lens shade and the UV filter protection filter that I had on there and with this blue light you see it see that right there that's the fungus and it appears to be on the other side of that corrector plate Now here's a close-up of that lens fungus. See how it looks spidery going away from the core? That'll let you know that that's what that is. Now here we're looking through the back side of the lens and I've got the uh, UV filter on the back side here that screws in. I've got that in there and um, I've looked through there and, there, and you, there's no other that apparent fungus that I can see other than on the very front of the lens so now the question was going to be how was I going to get that fungus uh, to kill it and keep it from spreading and so one of the things that I uh, knew was if I used a UV bulb and looking around locally and stuff I just couldn't find anything that uh, was appropriate so I did find something on Amazon so after some research I went to Amazon and found this company that that uh, I was able to buy what I was looking for Unisterol 
and I was very happy with them. Uh, shipment was quick. I had one one issue, and they were Johnny on the spot. They took care of it, sent out the new item, and uh, very very happy with Unistero. Now, and this is what I bought from them. It's this uh, unit here. It's uh, a CT UV-25 and it's a UVC germicidal lamp with a base so that would hold the lamp and it's a small little base that holds the bulb which is perfect for what I was looking for and it takes the standard E26 screw-in base so if you wanted to put that bulb in any kind of a standard screw-in lamp at your home you could now you want to be very careful because you, you don't want to be exposed to this um, whether it's yourself pets plants you don't want to be subject to this light and uh, it says it's got an 8,000 hour warranty so I thought let's give that a try so this bulb is a 25 watt 110 volt E26 which is your standard base so this is what I this is the description on Amazon Again, sold through Unistero. I also bought a spare bulb, and this is also the description uh, on Amazon, and sold uh, through Unistero. And you do get literature with this. which gives a lot of good information that I wasn't even aware of. And of course when using this bulb, they do have safety instructions in here. So just make sure you read that. It's amazing, 20 times stronger than summer noon sunshine is what this bulb will put out. Now you want to take a look at this. If you're going to be using this uh, in your home or for room uh, use, then this this chart will tell you uh, again I've got the 25 watt bulb in the center how many minutes it has to run for certain square feet so for this bulb I'll show you how I'm gonna do it uh, the, the way I'm going to going to uh, uh, put the light on with this bulb so here's the bulb in the base unit together it does come with a timer switch that's why I liked about this and I'll show you so now when you first plug it in watch the uh, the lights on there when you first plug it into 110 so you saw that it just runs through there the lights now to activate it you've got as you can see there five ten or, I'm sorry, 5, 15, 30, and 60 minute times. And um, the directions that come with it for the square feet, they definitely tell you, you know, how much you need. But uh, for this purpose, obviously, I'll show you how I'm going to do my lens. But um, to do this, I'm going to do this very quick. But uh, to turn this on, then, I'm going to push the button. 
the 5 will light up, then it'll go to 15. As you push the button, it'll scroll through. And when you stop, after about 5 seconds, the bulb will come on, and whatever this is placed at, 5, 15, 30, or 60, that's how long that uh, unit will stay on then. See, I'm scrolling through. Okay, when I went through to 60, it shut itself off because I um, went past 60. So we got 5 minutes, 15, 30, and 60. I hit it again. So now we're going to stop at 5. And then the unit comes on. I'm going to unplug it here to shut it off. So again, one of the reasons why I bought this setup, I thought this was nice. It's small, it's compact, I want, uh, the small base I like, and um, it will easily, uh, for what I want and how I'm going to do things, and if you want to put, th put this around in your rooms, uh, I've tried it already in various rooms, and uh, I like this because you can set this wherever you want. And uh, it won't tip over as long as you're putting it on a good sturdy, sturdy uh, base, you know, whatever you're putting it on. Um, I will say that the base and bulb, this unit together, was $35.70. I did buy an extra bulb. The bulb was $15.70. So now the question becomes, how am I going to do this, to set this up? Well, for the interim, to get this job done today, I've taken two 30-pound counterweights to my telescope. These are from Astrophysics, stainless steel. Shout out to Astrophysics. And I'm laying the lens horizontal so that the light can go through the lens and... Uh, the thing that I'm not sure about is, is if I turn this on, uh, leave the room, um, I'm sure that would work. But I'm going to go one step further and put a shroud over this. Now, another thing we know is looking at this chart that... This is a 25 watt bulb, and for a 50 square foot room, it's saying five minutes. Well, what I've got is very small. It's a 17 gallon uh, storage container that's black, and uh, I'm going to set it over this, this, and then since the uh, activation unit is outside of it I will then turn it on now the question is how long do I want it on I'm thinking one minute is more than enough um, so here's what I'm gonna do I'll take this black storage container unit and it'll get set down just like this and since the switch is on the outside I'll turn it on to say uh, I'll, well, I'll turn it on to the five minute point but we'll shut it off probably at a minute I cannot imagine that it needs to be on for more than a minute if uh, 50 square feet is is five minutes but I don't think it'll hurt anything either. So, but that's what the game plan is. So let me do this real quick. I guess what I'll do is I'm going to hit the five minute point. When it comes on, hit my stopwatch. Put the cover on. And um, I'll let it count down here. Now, I don't know. 
I'm assuming these rays, from what I've read, can't go through stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm here for the at the moment. And uh, I can see that the light is on, obviously still on, because down at the bottom where there's little holes in the lid part where the lid would come on, the light is there. So, we're coming up on 45 seconds. There's a minute, maybe I'll go a minute and a half here. I'm going to have to do a little research and see. Uh, I don't know that it has to be on that long, especially, like I said, we're inside this enclosed unit here. So you're concentrating everything to within this. So, all right, we are now a minute and a half. I just unplugged the cord so now I can take this off and it won't be on. By the way that what I was using was a 17 gallon tough tote from Home Depot. So now this will give a very strange smell. When you use it in your room I can smell it now. Now the bulb is a little bit warm not not that bad, but it's a little bit warm. This isn't hot or nothing. So, but a minute and a half. Bulb gets a little bit warm, nothing that you can't touch. And you do get a strange smell. Now, I don't smell this too bad, probably because it hasn't been on too long. But when you do this in a room, you will get a strange, I don't know how to describe the smell. Uh, but that's normal with that kind of a bulb so there is no issue okay now <clears throat> I didn't mention this but it should go without saying that the lens caps are off front and back okay I left the uh, UV uh, lens I left all the lenses on the UV protective and then the front and back left those on and uh, obviously the caps are off now what I'm gonna do since I'm aware of this I'm going to make up like a V block with three quarter inch boards that I'll cut but won't nail together so I'll use the boards the top one will be a V block that I can set lenses on and then I'll have three quarter inch wood that I can stack on top of another to get the height that you want to get it close to the center line and then if you had to if it's a little bit bigger lens you had to screw around with it you could always put a board under here to raise this up and down and your lens up and down to get the bulb you know so that the light is going through the axis of the lens one thing I'm gonna do too is now that I'm aware of this I, I none of my lenses have this so that's a good thing but I may just as a preventative maintenance just like on your car when you change fluids you know um, and, and do things that are preventative before it, uh, it can I've got tons of eyepieces I'm going to be doing this with my eyepieces and again using this setup that I have here I could put a couple eyepieces on here and put the cover on turn it on and um, you know uh, this should concentrate the light then to that and if there's any issues again like I said I none of my eyepieces have issues none of my other lenses none of my telescope equipment so this is an anomaly, but this should take care of it.